morning, everyone. My name is Steve Leatherman. I'm with the company WTH Technology, and we provide uh, assistance on digital mapping in your county, in Park County. We work the WebGIS site, the public site, and also some of the departments we work with them. And what I'm here today with is we also assist with data sharing, different kinds of data sharing. Um, engineering firms that want data, schools that want data, um, but there's one kind of data that is a uh, sort of a special request, and this is from uh, companies that are using the county data for their own purpose. So it's not a project that's tied to the county, but it's for their own purpose. And the Indiana Open Records Law has a procedure that uh, counties can participate in so that the county can charge a, quote, reasonable fee for that kind of request. And the open records law has sort of procedures to uh, how you can, you have to take certain steps before you can collect the fee. And part of the steps are the commissioners and the council have to pass an ordinance. And part of that ordinance is basically setting a fee and then uh, part of it is then when you get those requests that you basically treat those kinds of requests the same way. So you don't have one set of procedures for that kind of request for one party and then a different set for, for another. So that's why I'm here today. Uh, we had a, a request from a renewable energy company. And I don't know if they are still interested or not, but that was sort of initiated the action here uh, because that was exactly one of those types of companies making that kind of request. Um, they're sort of hard to handle if you don't have the procedures in place to, to do it. And so I approached the commissioners and basically told them the same story I'm telling you. And they looked over the ordinance, and we are doing this with 29 counties in Indiana and have been doing this for about 15 years. And it just happens we have not set this up with Park County yet. Um, but we presented that ordinance to the commissioners and the county attorney. They reviewed it and basically said, it looks all right to us, uh, but we want you to we have to get approval from the, from the council. Which the law basically says you do because with this ordinance, um, the way it works in the other 29 counties is that our company basically handles that request. So when it all shakes out, the county gets a small part of that fee. And the fee typically is $750 to basically handle that private transaction. That includes the, the billing, it includes the uh, paperwork as far as uh, putting an application together. It means sending that to the to the auditor. All of these requests have to be approved by the commissioners. So, uh, so that procedure, and then finally getting delivering the data that they want in the format that they want it. But out of that seven hundred fifty dollars, a third of that two hundred fifty dollars goes to the county. That's why I'm before the council because there is a money element to that to that procedure. Um, fortunately to the council, it's always money in, never money out. So when there is a request, if we go through the whole process and there is the approval, uh, basically $250 is being sent to the auditor. And that state open records law basically says uh, that the auditor needs to set up a little account and that money goes to that account and the law basically says that the money should be used to support your mapping activities in the, in the county. So that could go for anything that supports that kind of mapping. These kind of requests are not that common. So you're never going to make a fortune off this activity. Uh, you might get one request a year. Um, we probably, at those 29 counties, we probably get 40 requests uh, for the whole for a whole year, um, but setting this up means that when we get that request, and typically it's a call to the auditor or one of the county departments, 
they can just simply say, hey, WTH handles that. You give them a call. And when they give us a call, then we put together an application for them, and we say, you need to sign that, you need to get it back to us, and then we'll put the paperwork together to send it to the auditor, and that procedure <coughs> proceeds. Um, so that's why I'm here today. Uh, I'm, I've talked on. Do you have any questions about it? Why does someone go through this exercise instead of just going online and using the system that exists? I'll tell you the kinds of companies that, that request this are typically, we've had a number of energy companies that have requested this, uh, large engineering firms that are out of state that have some kind of consulting contract with somebody in Indiana, uh, large property management companies, farm management companies, uh, plat book companies, uh, companies that collect personal information usually for, uh, they represent banks and flood insurance companies and that kind of thing. They could go to the public website and there's nothing on the, that we share that's not on the public website. But when, they're, when these companies are from out of state, they're not familiar with the county, and they often want a county data set. So, so they don't want to go to the website and look at each one and try to pull that data. They just say, send us the data in a, in a digital mapping format that our folks can, can use for a project. So that is the reason, is they, is they could get it from the public website but they want that data set in a format that they can work with. And so it's cheaper for them to go through this process and pay that fee than it is for them to assign it to one of their folks. So they get in some different type of file that they can then dump into their own system. They get into a file, right, a convenient file that they can just drop right into their mapping program. And, and that's why they do it. It's just simply cheaper for them to do it that way than that makes sense. Um, Laura, where is the money going? Is there, what support of accounts are ruling on? What's this, does it have a non-reverting fund of its own? Is it going to the platform fund or what? check in to that, but I'd have to set up a separate fund for that to go into. Some fund number would have to be accounted for. The space station says it has to go into a mapping. It has to be used for that. It does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I want to set up an own. The seating fund number, so it goes in. Looks like on page itself. three, there's a there's a little bit of guidance there as far as where it goes and what it's to be used for. Number nine at the bottom. I say we have operated this for 15 years. Not not with every county. We've sort of picked <coughs> up counties over over the, the uh, a period of time. Procedure has been the same, and the and the price has not changed. That seems to be a price that, for some people, is too expensive. But for this category of companies, that's sort of a sweet spot that they've been willing to pay, and we haven't changed it. It has to be a reasonable amount. One of these, uh, you have a, 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 a fee schedule, uh -huh. an annual fee of fifteen hundred paid in advance for continuous transmission. Do you have many of these cases where people are wanting we have to only save all one? Time? We have, we have, in our history of that 15 years, we've had two requests for that continuous uh, data. Uh, we have one that is active right now, and uh, and again, that would be a third. So if it's 1,500, you get 500 rather than the, yeah. the 250. <coughs> um, more comment. Uh, I know our ladies in the plat office have been very happy with the help they've received from your organization. Um, I can't remember the individual's name they talk to all the time, but um, they've been very happy with the service you've been providing them. Um, for all intents and purposes, I think that we've had pretty good service from WTH. Do you want to have heard from anybody? And I hear you, that. You, I, you know, hear that? Oh, I, <laughs> absolutely. I call Trevor. Monday or Tuesday asking to put the 2021 assessments on because they weren't on yet for the people to see. He had it done the next day. Well, hit the staff did. I don't know who did it, but I worked with Trevor. And the next day it was up and running. Anytime I've had a request, I think they do it in an astounding amount of time. I would expect some yeah. things to take longer, and it's, it's done in a few days. 
and I handle the data sharing request for the, for the company, and this just makes it more efficient. If I don't have it, then I'm sort of stuck. Uh, but we, if we have this in place, then, then it's just it's a procedure, and we do the process that you go through. And yeah. Does Logic ask for data dumps from you? They do. In fact, they, and that's a company that whose clients are typically banks and flood insurance companies, and they will make a request um, usually in the spring or the fall, and it'll be for 10 or 15 counties. And they sort of rotate. Um, they called me, that's why I was asking. Okay. And, uh, and they ask for so many counties that, that if we add Park County, I will probably give them a call and, and say there's another county that uh, you know might be available to them. So for the council, um, Mr. Clutter, our attorney, did also review the ordinance. He had no problem with it. I forwarded it to him. He said, I think you're in Boone County, I believe, yes. and, that, uh, and said that as far as he knew, Boone County was. Uh, In fact, I got a list of more than pleased more than <laughs> <help. laughs> with your service. It was a comment from, yeah. from Mr. Flutter. So, Bob um, <clears throat> reviewed it. He had no problem. He said it's pretty much a standard ordinance. It is standard. He didn't find anything. I know you said that the county commissioner's attorney also reviewed it. So, but Mr. Flutter didn't. He had no problem. Do we have an ordinance number? <laughs> and there's two parts to this I see here. Um, there's the fee schedule in the back that's signed by the commissioner. Um, and then the ordinance in and of itself at the front end <coughs> to be signed by us and the commissioners. Um, sorry, the electronic map data sharing agreement and the fee schedule are signed at this point by the commissioners. So, I have no concerns with it. And so I would make a motion that we uh, would approve joint ordinance 2021-04. I'll second. Motion be made second to approve the ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do we need to adopt the fee schedule too? I don't think so. They already did. They probably did that anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Appreciate your good uh, your good service and cyclical reassessment. It was supposed to start in May 1. This is the last year of the four-year cycle. We are currently in Sugar Creek Township, and then the rest of them are south. Um, we sent on our Form 11s on April 26th, and we've had several calls on those. We'll have a few appeals. Um, personal properties in full throw. Everything's going well. Oh, and I ask because I can ask, not because I need to know. Uh, has the farm values, the base rate, is it? It went up. It, what did it, it go up a little? It went up ten dollars per acre. Ten dollars per acre, because I've been asked that. Yes, so. and it should have been on their form eleven. Um, we we've, we've started putting the farm base rate, what it was and what it went to, on the form eleven, along with classified forest and wildlife. It's so on, on the there. Back or side it's on the front, the right in the middle of the body. Right in the middle of the body. Okay. I've been asked that, so... No, not a problem. Well, it was. <coughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Treasurer, are you collecting taxes, I suppose, <laughs> left and right? How's that going? Thank <laughs> God we think we're finally done. We, I still still like brown burger, but <laughs> we got it done. And I can tell you, before the last week, which was the killer, we were over a million dollars more than last year. Oh, the people and, were paying already were paying. And a lot of them are paying the whole year. Good. Nice. Good. So, we can get you a good number next week. Okay, we'll keep, keep, <laughs> keep up the good work. Henry, congratulations on your appointment as clerk. Thank you. Yeah. All yeah. if you'd like to say anything. Everything's going good. Girls are picking up everything and rolling well. 
working with the course to learn everything. And so far, no big issues going on. <coughs> Trying to get a part-time person so far. No luck on that. <coughs> We have 63 in jail right now. That kind of bounces from the 70s to 60s. Uh, six of them are DOC inmates. Our collections for the year for our various fees are Seven thousand three sixty-five point four six. Uh, we built about sixty grand the DOC for the year. Um, USDA said sometime next week we should hear on the vehicle grant. Either yay or nay on that. Uh, so hopefully we'll get that. Um, we are doing another firearm auction. We had about thirty guns that either weren't released yet or we couldn't get to them before the last auction. We're going to do a joint auction with the town of Rockville. They're going to do some surplus equipment, like a patch or something. Vehicles. We've got one forfeiture car that we have to sell by September. We use as a school car. We'll throw it in there. And like I said, I think probably around 30 guns, maybe a few more by the time June hits. But it's June 12th, and they'll be down by the fire department here in Rockville. But <coughs> They said that it's open if any other county entities have equipment that they need to get rid of, rid of or items. I think the library's put some stuff in there. So just if you guys have something that you like to get rid of, Jim is aware of it. So I just contact him and might be a good chance to clear some junk out. But, um, we're still waiting on another quote for our parking lot at the jail. It's getting in pretty bad shape. So we'll probably fund that entirely with commissary, or mostly with commissary. Uh, we uh, purchased a uh, John Deere tractor. I think it was a 2025R. It's a compact tractor for the jail. It's got a belly mower on it and loader. We traded the other one in. They bought it back. 22 or 23 years ago when the jail first opened. But we use it to mow with, but we traded in the Dixie chopper mower that we'd seized probably 16 years ago that was on its last leg. And the golf cart was about that old, so. You don't have the yellow golf cart in No, no. You can buy it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can buy it. Go to John Deere. It's for sale. No, thank you. But I think we spent like $9,200 for the new tractor after those were traded in, so. We got rid of some stuff, that was. Yeah, yeah, it cleared up some space, so. Yeah. All right, that's all I, I have. Okay, thank you. Cindy, did you want to say something? Your back's so far that I can't hardly see you. No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, Chris, I guess you're up here. Yeah, about I have uh, two grants that I'm applying to. First one's pretty easy. It's going to be four thousand dollars, and I want to buy batteries and wheels to fix the uh, message boards that we have. Um, this is through the Indiana Department of Homeland Security Foundation grant. There's no um, there's no match to it, so it's, it's a pretty simple grant. In the past, we've used this to buy AEDs. Um, the second grant is a little bit more complicated. So this is a grant that's going to in the end, um, it's going to be about, I uh, can't remember how much I put on there, but uh, 20, 23, 29, $25,000. 29, 7, yeah, well, uh, It's almost $30,000. What it's going to do is it's going to take our GIS data and it's going to convert it into NG911 standard data. So right now our data is not standard. You want, I can kind of explain it, but the WPH guy, thank God he left. Um, so basically, think of it as all this stuff, addressing, center lines of roads, it's all, it's all set in a certain way. It's a big spreadsheet, right? It's got all these different numbers on it. And what the company that, you know, I've got to tell you, I have two different quotes right now. I just need one more. What they're going to do is they're going to change that data into the NG911 standards. Um, 
This grant came down through the state board pretty quick here, and they um, they said, "Hey, who wants to take advantage of it?" I already applied, and we already we already got awarded. Um, but there's a 60% match, and so that 60% I'm sorry, 40% match is a little over 10 grand. And so I would ask, and we can do the the appropriate appropriations paperwork later. Right now, I'm just getting your approval for the grant, but that we just take that money out of the, the, the big money we have in the 1222 account. We got like, thir I think, almost $300,000 in that account. And we just move that 10 grand over. I take that money and I match it with what the state gives us. And some guy changes the data over and then we don't have to deal with it again. You can use the statewide 911 funds for the match. I'm, I'm next to 100% sure I'm going to confirm that in about 20 minutes. But I have to tell you. <clears throat> what, is, uh, what is the deliverable? I mean, I, obviously you're going to now get GIS data that's NG911 compliant. What is the average Joe going to see here? They're going to see, so they're going to see better information. Basically, so if I go onto the online GIS site, well, You're, no one's going to see anything different. It's basically what's going to happen is, is if you have a call and it gets misrouted. So ba basically, what what they're doing is they're taking, and you guys are probably familiar with GIS and you know, farmers, right? I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. So you got this layer that's an address layer that has all of our stuff in it, but it is set to um, the, the coordinates on that are not the same as like everybody else, and it's not the same as this infrastructure that the state and the federal government is building to route 911 calls. So as the NG911 process, as the state and the federal government and all these other you know, big tech companies kind of move down this path, it won't be able to understand our, our data. They won't be able to read it and align calls correctly. Okay, so I'm going to try to put this in layman's terms. Yeah. If I'm on my cell phone out in somewhere in this county and I dial 911, AT&T will receive that call. All right, it'll go through their network. Yep. Right. It will hit somewhere, and that will hit this GIS layer. And through this grant, will theoretically, hopefully, make that route to the appropriate dispatch center more accurately than what happens now. Yes. Is that a correct statement? That is correct, yes. Because I do know there are times when people call, and it will particularly say in Green Township, as an example, and it will go to Putnam. We had, we had that happen a few years ago, it was a four-year time, and the way Amy Hensley explained it to me, and, and you correct me if I've got this wrong, why it bounced to whatever tower that was the biz, the, I don't know, the closest or the biz, the one you were taking in and shipped it to Putnam. Well, Putnam didn't pick up on it, but this was a Park County call, and because we had very similar addresses, and so there was a delay before they figured out, oh, you, you need the whole park. So, Happens quite that, that, that is true. That's so we can break that down to two things. So the thing that this that this grant will do is that your old phones they used to operate off the towers. Basically, it would ping a tower, it would go to that tower, you get a direction, and it would you know, triangulate where you were based upon all yeah. this bullshit. Nowadays, everyone carries around the tracking devices in their pockets, and all those phones they they have GPS, and when you do a nine one one call. You, the phone sends you, you know, the lat long, right? So the lat long goes into the tower, and then it goes through this, through up to Fort Wayne, where the state has in digital. That stuff gets processed, and they know, based upon our our county boundaries and our and the dispatch boundaries, that hey, that coordinate is inside of this boundary. It goes to this location. So that that's a little bit different because that that's how cell phones and stuff work. What this will do is it will to make it so as, uh, right now we use an MSAG, which is a master street address layer. So say your house is at 123 you know, West Main Street in Rockville. That address is in a computer, and so if you were to call from that address, and we also have some geolocation on it, that address, kind of the computer runs through, and it finds that, and it knows that address goes to this, this dispatch. Well, they want to get away from the MSAG stuff and just go to geo coordinates where you just have a layer in a GIS system, which is far more accurate, it's easier, it's less computing, and it, and it goes. So that, that's what we're heading towards. But 
we're heading towards it at all kinds of different levels. So is our GI or is WTH involved in this at some point? They're one of the companies that would that would do it. That would do it, yes. And, and we're not the only ones. I, I, it just sounds like an entry shampoo. You know, it's like some made-up thing, right? Uh, no, I, I, that's why we're asking the question. I mean, somewhat because it's it's important that we and those that are here and the public that use this understand what you're trying to do. Which, is what I'm understanding is, is you were trying to improve public safety with this grant, so that yes. when somebody calls for help, they will get a more accurate response. Yes. And that's important. It got added with that, so I don't know. I think you're, uh, yeah. We're going a little old. Okay. Make a motion to approve the grants. Yes. I'll second. second. Motion been made and second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Like you say, work out the paperwork later on the appropriation and all that, I guess, but you can deal with that when you get to it. All right. Okay, thanks. Thank you. What's the newspaper? Newspaper want to copy it? No. no. Chickies? <laughs> yeah. Okay, approval of the minutes from the April 8th meeting. Someone. Third. All there? Aye. 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 Okay, no additional appropriations. No transfers. Um, yeah, yeah, I want to get my lane dress in this center. Um, Ready to rush down there with our door. Um, this is an intercategory transfer that we're going to want done. Um, it's from 1000 41 03 5081. That's the council trial services, professional services line, to 1000 41 03 5080, which is service contracts. That is the uh, for $4,000. That's for the budget help. Amount that we decided on last month. Uh, I'm going to tie this in with the encumbrance line on here. There's no need for the encumbrance, as we had discussed at some point here. Um, we were I asked you to do a transfer and, and lit at it to accomplish this. Um, do you recall that? Okay, the transfer that needed to be done there was uh, 1112 dash double zero dash double or CO three uh fifty eighty one to fifty eighty two uh for a total of fourteen thousand fifty three dollars. That should take care of the yeah. less simple invoices for three years and we do not need to do an encumbrance out of the general fund member lit at it or whatever we want to do so we can scratch that encumbrance. It's a simpler process than doing an encumbrance and then turning around and still having to do a transfer. Back into the 
revenue lines, mm -hmm. and now um, I am requesting that to be put back into the office supplies and pay for it. Okay. So approved. One, I think Laura is going to address the real estate. Um, let me let me first state that you know we did a, adopt an abatement for Scott Pet Products. As far as their personal property, I've been in discussion with them. They don't have it in service. We're not claiming that until next year. So even though you adopted that, we're, we won't start the first year till next year. So I wanted to put that out there and let you know. Now, we're moving on to su Superior Forest Products, which um, took over the abatement from J.T. Shannon for Timberland Industries. This is their last year, and the, I know you adopted in 15. Same issue with them. They did not put the, the equipment into service right away. Mm -hmm. This is their last year of the abatement. It's a five-year abatement. We didn't start it until 17. Okay. So... Um, I've been with Kelly Stickney. Uh, we've been talking. She, we both agree. She wanted to make sure she touched base, that she understood that this was the last year. I went back and pulled all the records, and we started it in 17, payable. So, what time was So, this will be the last year. Um, per, I, of course, you guys make the final decision, but per reviewing the CF1, which you, there should be a copy of somewhere. Um, they started out with current number of employees of 94. They've actually got 115. They've done everything they said they would do. They are in operation. They're employing Park County people. And they filed on time, and their file was absolutely infallible. They did a nice job. Um, so from the assessor's point of view, I wanted to recommend that we adopt or approve the abatement for the last year. Yes. See, well, yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah, you got right. sign it. That's fine. Uh -huh. That's fine. Well, we can deal with it. Yeah. Right. So then, Laura, we have the real estate one from um, the Inch. Inch. Yes, and this is a continuum one that we've had in the past, and they have sent sent in again to have it debated again this, for the 21 page 22. Uh, does anybody remember how much longer this one has? I think that it was a 10, and I believe uh, from giving the values to the auditor, I believe we have done this will be the it's either the third, third or fourth. I think it's the third. Think so I think we did two years prior, so this will be the third year. Third. Uh, just as a uh, reference point for the audience and those that are watching, uh, they estimated uh, at the time of filing the abatement uh, of uh, 18 employees adding 10. They had a current number of 18, they were going to add 10. Uh, they now actually have 45 employees. Um, <clears throat> and have added 27 to get to that. They've made that more than they've they they exceeded uh, what they said they would do. Um, the salaries exceeding their expectation uh, by the tune of $800,000. So, 
I believe they're in compliance as well. This is in three copies. Okay. So we'll need to have a motion and a second to adopt the we the, adopt the finding that they are in compliance. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. I'm just marking it as in compliance. Okay, so we heard from the Park County Library, Librarian Lindsay Bishop. She's indicated that our appointment of Judy Crook wishes to uh, resign from the uh, library board. Uh, her term runs through December 31st of 2022. Uh, we contacted Sheila Rohr, who was the old. Or, Elementary principal at Rockville oh. Elementary, I should say. Oh, I'm in trouble with that. Yeah, I hired her. I hired her. I hired her. Yeah, because she sees me, she'll let me know. Yeah. So I think she would be a great appointment. She's willing to do it. So I would, uh, I agree with that. Um, I think uh, I'd publicly like to thank Judy for her, or for her work on, on the library board as our appointment for the last. Uh, Few years, um, she filled an unexpired term herself, and then uh, was appointed to a full term, and has chosen to resign. That's, that's too bad, but we thank her for her for her efforts. Um, I strongly support playing Sheila in this position. Second. Most been made thanks to appoint Sheila Roar to the Park County Library Board. Aye. Time to we'll take on the library. package, you have two letters, one from the Park County Farm Bureau expressing concern about the use of public monies for rails to trails, which to my knowledge we've not had a no local tax money that is going to the trails. No. Uh, and then you have a competing letter then from the Park County or the Park Trails Alliance basically answering their the Farm Bureau's letter saying that they share the concerns and that they basically are in agreement that no local tax dollars are in. I, uh, Those are in your package. You can read them. I mean, I can release these to the newspaper if they're interested. Okay, I'll do that. I, I have a comment about that a little bit. Is the Farm Bureau did, uh, I was somewhat involved in the preparation of this letter. They asked for some information, some guidance from me. It's a very important subject. Um, uh, it's not just only about uh, uh, whether local dollars go to this trail or not, or local tax dollars, excuse me, that needs to be clearly stated as tax dollars they're talking about. Um, but it's also property rights uh, for uh, those who bound it, uh, those who need to cross it, who own property on each side of it, uh, and also for working with uh, landowners uh, in situations where the trail uh, would inhibit or could uh, inhibit the use of their property. Um, there are some cases of that, um, and it's important to the Farm Bureau and important to uh, a lot of uh, residents and landowners in the area of this trail that these things are, are uh, looked into and, and dealt with in the trails letter addresses some of these things that they intend to take all that into consideration. So um, it's uh, a very important subject that's going on right now. <clears throat> Any other comments? Do you want to say anything, JP? Put on the table. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have anything? Do you have anything else? I do. Um, budget uh, forms were sent out uh, in the last couple weeks. Uh, all the department heads should have their forms. If you don't have a uh, fund that you're responsible for, please make that known so we don't have to try to clean those up later. Uh, they're due back uh, June, I believe it was the 5th. That's the 4th, Friday. Uh, due back June 4th to the auditor and myself. 
gotten a couple departments back at this point, uh, and then we'll start working on it. Um, we did also get uh, notice from the state that uh, we would get a little bit of lit supplemental distribution. Um, we never seem to ever be uh, a party to that. But this year uh, we are because our uh, trust fund at, uh, in Indianapolis has gotten larger than what they set as a limit. So we will uh, get about $43,000 a piece to public safety and, and lit it and another $100. Thousand or so in the shares money to the general fund. So um, don't count on that every year or anything like that. But this year it's uh, the trust fund balance is a little bigger than what they expected, so they're sending some of it back to us. So they're giving back our giving back our our collective tax collective tax dollars locally back to us. Yeah, that's my wife. That's my job. Okay, anybody else have anything?